Pre-show shenanigans. All right. Uh, start off my Mondays every week this semester with one of my favorite classes I've ever had at USC, uh, f- spiritual wellness and physical well-being, something along those lines. Can't say I know the exact title of the class. Do you meditate in that class? Uh, we start off every day with a breathing meditation today. Oh, that's pretty, uh, that's can, pretty, that's pretty great. I can quickly go over what today's uh, a new breathing uh, exercise. Well, here's the problem. If you do that, everybody might fall asleep while listening to this right True. now. True, And I'm, I actually am pretty sure no one can even hear it. So I'm actually not going to do the breathing. Yeah. Are you going to get the mic really close and start breathing into it? Cause then there's a whole nother problem going on here with well, you, you mouth breathing. You tell into me, the you tell me, does this, maybe it could be a little ASMR. No, can you hear that? Can you, can I mean, I heard it for a second. Okay, it was just so kind of weird, gonna, but it's not going to work. Well, anyway, that's not the main point of this. The The main point is in this class, we were discussing. Um, let me let me get the exact the exact term. I believe s- psychosensitive relationships. Now we got a fraud alert. We got a fraud alert. And I'm not saying this psycho relationship is any fraud stuff, but we'll leave that up for the viewers to determine. Uh, her example in class was Taylor Swift fans, how they'll go crazy for Taylor Swift, uh, whatever she does. Uh, and immediately I thought of Ohio State football, uh, immediately. Uh, that's the only thing. Them, the Chargers, the Dodgers, all of them live rent-free in my head. Uh, and, you know, she was just popcorn calling the class, which I hate. But for this, I wanted to be called because I had maybe the best example. You had the room. greatest thing physically possible to say. And... Uh, she eventually gets on. You, do you do you have anyone, any any group or person you you don't know personally, but you hold them in high regard and care a lot about what they do? Uh, yeah, yes, I do. Eighty five men specifically in Columbus. Uh, yeah, I was going on about Ohio State and how when they lost to Michigan, I thought uh, my body was shutting down. I was developing my own sickness. Turned out to be COVID. Please the tell me. Laughed. Please but, tell. Yeah, you, so you did tell me you got COVID immediately after they lost. Yeah, uh, person. But um, yeah, I was explaining how I am emotionally attached to Ohio State football. It's not good for my mental or physical health. It definitely is a deterrent to the future success uh, and sanctity of my mind. Uh, but I was just bringing that up, thinking about people we don't know personally, but we're obsessed with. And while we were, I was thinking of Ohio state, I immediately then thought of the other moment. Um, when my brother met urban Meyer golfing one day, uh, let, let me get the exact date when this happened. I, I need to know exactly. So I know we need another context jaguars yeah that was what i was gonna say it was post jaguars it was Um, post okay wait it might september 19th 2020 oh no that was that was that was before that's before so he was like 2022 that makes a lot more sense urban still had some yeah okay so there's pride there 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 was some pride there still still had pride being associated with ohio state football but uh yeah, there's just a picture of my brother with Urban on the golf course. A uh, great call by my brother wearing his 2009 Ohio State Rose Bowl hat. That's how Urban immediately knew he was a real fan. So, so I need to ask. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know the whole context of the story. Did Urban I've go up to him? Me. Did he go up to Urban? So what happened? My brother was just wearing that Ohio State hat. He was just going in um, that day to play, and whoever I. I'm not a big dimple head myself, so I don't know exactly who's. How do you schedule a tea time? I'm ex- online. I'm depends on the part, depends on it if in, it's but, a country club or if it's yeah. a normal club or whatever. But somebody at the at the golf place told my brother like notice his Ohio State hat was like, hey, you know, Coach Urban Myers here today. And my brother was like, uh, cancel the tea time. Which hole? <laughs> Where can I go watch? Uh, my brother did not golf that day, even though he's wearing, he's, he's holding clubs in that picture. It was for the picture. Coach Meyer was like, hold the club, son. It'll make you look like we were doing something. Uh, but he goes up, he finds out urban is there and cancels his tea time, essentially sit, essentially just waiting at the 18th hole, waiting for urban to come by. And urban immediately saw the Ohio state hat after he finished and urban to my brother said, Oh, that's my, I O. That that's my did, did, obviously. Did, did your brother, your brother 
before. Answered, right? Bobby said I own started crying. Um, but like uh to be that close to coach pre-Jags, okay, reputation not ruined yet. Yeah, uh, post-Jags, oh, I don't know if I don't know if he's getting close to him. That it's it, it, there's a debate going for on. For right? that timeline, I mean, it does it arguably doesn't get cooler than that. Like for us at my brother, he mine at the time he was a senior at USC, so like he was still college kid, like I mean, wait, wait, wait. This was 2020. So was this during COVID? What was this a my, COVID meetup? September 2020. No masks in the picture. For we'll USC, I, I, I had to wear a mask the entire 2021. So I mean, we're just talking about equity here and fairness. Um, once again, the richest. I had to wear masks the in richest, the buildings here. The richest, the richest in college football. They, they go on their own rules, you know. What what can I say, people? What can I say? Uh, but I just immediately thought of that. But, you know, as we slightly um, – we can divert this a little bit further. I think I know your answer. Um, any professional athlete you can meet right now, who would it be? I think I know your answer. That I could meet right now? Right now, today. That's kind of a loaded current, question. Let's do current only, no formers, because my answer would be a former player. I know you think it would be Stefan, but it's not Stefan. That's not who I would think. Okay. That's a, that's a, I mean, in all honesty, it probably would be Shohei Otani. Really? Oh, I wasn't. But like, if, was, if you're going to, if you, because I know you would think it would be somebody on the Vikings, and my expectation is you think it probably would be Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. <laughs> yes. So. Um, yeah, but like, I mean, look, I mean, dude, getting a picture with Shohei Otani probably makes way bigger dividends than just nerves. I, okay. This is the thing. Like I, I'm thinking of just a quick five to now, 10 minute convo. Shohei would be cool, but realistically you're meeting Ipe, his translator, which is even cooler. So part of me actually thinks the correct answer for me, if it comes to a Dodger is Kershaw. I don't need to think. Any, oh, any well, much well, we no, we you can't do that. We already met him. Well, you not, can't say that. Not five minutes. Okay, he saw us. Okay. From the, we okay. made eye contact. He gave us a. He, he gave a little little <laughs> nod of appreciation, and then Bruzdar I mean, proceeded to throw a ball close, fifty feet into the as third deck. Our but... moment with Bruzdar and Yancy. <laughs> our moment that we had with Bruzdar and Yancy. Yeah, that was that was different. If you were to go past or present, though, I mean, I I'm pretty sure we both have the same Kobe answer Bryant. for this. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. No, don't even need to think. Yeah, don't like don't have to ask what Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Uh, yeah. If I were going to go off an Ohio State player, though, this is really tough for me. I don't I don't immediately know off the top of who uh, who I would pick, but I I'm just saying right now it would be hard for me to pick someone else other than Brent Barrett. It'd be hard. I know Cardell's what you want me to say, but. What JT Barrett Grant. did for Ohio State football. Grant. Ezekiel Elliott. No, it, it wouldn't be Zeke. I'd be afraid if I met Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. What about AJ Hawk? How do you feel about that? That'd be really cool. That would actually be really cool. He's pretty that'd be style, really right? Cool. That'd be really cool. I would love seeing Hawk, like Galloway, Herb Street, like any of those media personalities. That'd be very cool. Uh, yeah, you know who I know you would not want to see? Oh, fuck. I might have to pick Braxton Miller, dude. I'm sorry. Like that. Oh, I was going to say like Gary on Conley or nah, Damon, Damon Conley. Arnett, maybe. I mean, for, <laughs> for the sanctity of the Waterboy podcast, I don't think I should meet Damon Arnett. But uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I'm not, Another, gonna I'm not going to name him, but uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore, that, that's who you were thinking of. <laughs> Um, Lattimore, I'd love love to meet him. Uh, if we're actually going to talk active player that I would uh, like to meet, though, it would be Nick Bosa because I have the most questions because he played like maybe 18 games for Ohio State before getting hurt. So, like, I have the most questions for him. Not like CJ. CJ, I've seen a lot of recently. I think I've I think I've seen a lot of CJ. I also wouldn't want to see CJ right now because I. CJ would know what I've said about him, and I'm I'm not man enough. Did you ever him. draft J.K. Dobbins in the fourth round? Because then that would be the greatest thing ever, because you'd be able to see no. him and say, "Hey, my bad, I 
cause your career to derail. I didn't do that to him. Did not do that to Jacalyn, but... Huh. Those would be up there. Uh, like, it, it'd have to be a quarterback. It, realistically, it'd have to be a quarterback. It'd have to be Braxton, JT, Pryor, Cardale, Haskins, Justin, CJ. It, it, it'd have to be one of those. Not Trey Sermon. Gotcha. <laughs> I think Trey Sermon may have been in Columbus for six months. Uh, like, <laughs> he was a late transfer and he was gone by December or January 1st. Like, so. I don't know how much. Not Billy Price. Stuff. I understand. It's okay. Taylor Decker would consider. I, I'd be interested in that interview. Had Elfline? What about Wyatt Davis? How do we feel about Wyatt Davis? I would have a lot of personal questions because he's from LA and it's a Bosco, <laughs> but not not as many Ohio State questions as some of the other guys. But yeah, okay. That was yeah, that was a fun little fun little Hold time. on. I still have I still have some more guys. Jalen Holmes? What do we feel about Jalen Holmes? <laughs> Are you just going to go over any Ohio State Vikings player you could like think of right He's now? He's the only ones I know, man. Elfline, the only ones Jaylen that I know. Holmes. Uh, let, let, me try, who else? let me try to think of another Ohio State Vikings guy in there that, that I can give you. Um, there's no Ohio State Vikings. That might Vikings be it. That, uh, Chris Minnesota. Carter, technically, right? Chris, yeah, Chris that, 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 was old. One. that one's old. But yeah, that's an but old one. Counts. Counts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. counts who to Yeah, I'm just trying to name like really random Ohio State guys that yeah, just have no affiliation with being good. Who else could have been Minnesota, Ohio? I think that that was it. That recently was it. I know James Laurinaitis is from Wayzata, Minnesota. So I maybe there's an Ohio State Minnesota connection there. Uh, sh- shout out the Wayzata Warriors. I believe that's the, the high school mascot. The, no, 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 not the Wayz. No. Okay, never mind. I, I spoke a little. Spoke yeah, a little. Honestly, too soon. my I honestly could not tell you. I don't remember. It'd be like why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Lakers. <laughs> it probably is a team. That's probably like the uh, the junior like Lakers elementary Lakers school team in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably massive. the St. Paul Lakers. I could see it right now. Uh, well, whatever. that was a you Wait, know that, that was, was the Lakers. That was That's why Lakers. that popped That's into my head. <laughs> yeah, that makes that makes sense. Okay, but. Uh, all right, without further ado, got a big time episode today, Everett. But what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. Today is episode 205, and the greatest week of sports is finally here, everybody. March Madness is finally here. NFL Free Agency is number two. Uh, Justin Fields is a stealer. Um, I was about to Called say it. Been freed, Called but it's it. not. It's not freed. Called it. Called uh, it. Tip, tip Called it. Tip the cap. Tip the cap. Uh, Keenan Allen is a Chicago Bear. The greatest Fuck. football player of the last decade has retired. Aaron Donald, not Patrick Mahomes. And we have some Dodger updates. Wait, you're yeah. telling me Leighton Van Der Esch was not the greatest football player over the half past half century? I'm not even sure if we could say the greatest Boise State player of the past half century. I think that goes to Jay Ajayi. But, um, oh, I thought you were going to say Alexander Madison. My bad. I did not know he was a Boise State. Uh, Boise State. Boise State. I know uh, Bronco, Bronco, Boise State Broncos, something like that. I, mean, I know there are. I, I, I feel like I don't, this. it's got to be alliteration. Boise Bronco, I feel like, right? What other Mustang? Other, that just doesn't roll off the tongue. If that was the name, then my God, I'd have to have a conversation with that AD. Uh, but okay, we'll, we'll start with MLB. Uh, opening day will be happening in between this upload and the next upload so by by the time not much time will be passing hey, between hey, this and that time, it starts at like 3 a.m so by the time next episode is up we will already have the first two games of the season under our belt so that is exciting to consider that's exciting to think about uh we'll start off with the dodgers everett of course uh dave roberts just announced our number five starter for now to start the season gavin stone coming off a, I would say, historically bad for Dodger rookies. Pretty historically bad. I Pretty bet bad. There were many other rookies with like nine plus ERAs last year. But for Dodger rookie pitchers, not up to standards. Not what we like to see this season, Everett. Gavin Stone in spring training is posting over 9.2 innings, one earned run, five hits, one walk. Nine I mean, games. hey, that's better than Yamamoto right now. So I'm not going to be saying anything. Yeah, uh, right now, Glasnow and Stone have definitely been our two best pitchers, both with sub one whips. What's Bobby at? ERAs. Uh, 
Bobby with a 1-4 whip, 4-3 ERA. He gets a pass, though, all right? He might have just been in Cancun the other week. So, like, he gets a pass. Uh, but I'm really excited. I'm really excited for the season to start, of course. Uh, it's time for Dodger baseball, people. It's, it's so been a minute. So, just real quick, if you guys are watching, mark this part. Grant's saying that, all right? It's time and if we lose, Dodger baseball, that is true. Come back that to this. Because uh, I guarantee you, the start of those episodes will be... All right, the season's already over. It's been two games. Dodger baseball in the gutter. Uh, we are fucked, everybody. I'm, saying, I, I'm so sorry. If we do not sweep the Cardinals on the official opening day series, I'm waving the whole. I'm waving the white flag. Season's the white gone. flag is in the ground. Yeah. No. Oh, it it's, is. Posted. It's on the mast. We haven't. Yeah. We haven't. We haven't. Um. Fucking. It's sitting there. It's ready to go up. But the flag is up. Okay. The flag is there. It is ready. Uh. We just need someone to pull that fucking little rope levy machine. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Some other pitchers that I'm really excited for this year, though, that I wanted to mention. Um, one of our relievers that I really want to dive into, he's been fucking phenomenal, Kyle Hurt. 3.2 innings, two hits, three walks. He does have a 1-4 whip. No runs allowed, though. He doesn't necessarily get many strikeouts. But if we look at last year, how Ryan Frazier pitched, I believe he put up like a, a .7 ERA once he joined the Dodgers last year at like age 36. Kyle Hurt, I believe, uh, is mid to late 20s. I don't believe he's too old. Oh, 25, Kyle Hurt. Okay. Kyle Hurt, this is a guy that we need to we need to make him like Brewster 2.0. Okay. We need another younger reliever that we just have locked up ransom under the Dodgers for the next six years. Okay. And then Kyle Hurt, if he could break through, this might be a guy that we'll be hearing a lot of for the next five years ever. So I'm very which excited. Would be good for that. us, which would be very good for us. Very. It's well, unless very hearing fun. a lot of is, it means that he's getting shelled and everybody's really pissed off. Let's not even bring then that up. It's not even great. address that. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be too, too good, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, when I think of guys like Bruce Dark, Gratterall, what they've meant to the team, guys like Evan Phillips, who I believe just hit like ARB one or ARB two, just having these guys locked in as rotation pieces is so important. Nobody, Nobody aspires to become a reliever when they're coming up in the minors. So it's tough to get these guys to do it. But if we can get Kyle Hurt in there too, be a nice little rotation piece for a while, we'll gladly take that. Uh, I guess last little Dodger update I want to go over just in terms of hitting. Now, um, a little bit ago, we were just I was just going over uh, the combined OPS of Mookie, Shohei, and Freddie, those numbers were pretty hilarious. They've dropped off uh, a little bit now. But uh, Otani, with a 1369 OPS this spring, 833 slug, 536 on base. Shohei is ready for prime time. He's ready to go. Uh, I also want to shout out Max Muncy, 1255 OPS, 733 slug, and a 522 on base, Everett. Those are numbies right there. Shout out Altman, 1133 OPS, 455 on base. And my, like, actually, my favorite signing of the year that wasn't Shohei Otani or Yamamoto, uh, like everyone else, Teoscar Hernandez, 1083 OPS, 613 slug, 471 on base. That's our six hitter, you know? Like, my God, we could be doing some damage this year. Uh, and lineup's looking nice at least top yeah top only qualm people. still is the lux mookie switch stuff that's going on right now yeah, you lux, know my opinion on that in his couple of innings played in korea he's been hitting the ball very well he was turning some double plays looking a little bit more comfortable at second i i'm team lux i fucking love gavin i mean i, I, I you know my opinion about though. i would I, like I, him I to be at him. short in my opinion but that's just me that is just me. Hey, yeah, hey I, we, we've talked about this. Logos have to be going the other way. Logos got to be just, going the other way, Craig. He's just battling the <clears throat> It's as simple as that. He's coming back. He, he's just getting a little little angsty. You know, he's playing with Otani now. Uh, you know, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. I, I can get it for a young... Well, Gavin might be like 25. So I'm not really sure how much longer we can keep the young label on him. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. Uh. That's all. That's all. Really, I want to go over specifically in the MLB. Also, saw Blake Snell is now favored to land with the San Francisco Giants for a projected two-year, sixty million dollar deal. If that's all, it, if that's all it costs, Everett. I mean, Dodger. 
I just I don't know. You're talking about the Squidward meme? Yes. Squidward Dodger. Um, I just I don't know if he's gonna want to I think he's gonna more so want to be like the top guy, uh, or like one or two, and I don't think that he'd want to sign with the Dodgers to do that. To be yeah, like I, five, I can totally four, understand five. that. And if he can come out of these two years still as a top three lefty starter in the MLB, he'll get paid again afterwards. So I understand his logic there. Um but like, hey, I'm I'm not even joking right now. Um, Snell's gonna have to face us like three times if he goes to the Giants. So pick your poison if you want that. Go for it. Go for it, dog. But like, I, I remember hearing some baseball analysts talk about like, yeah, there's a there's a good amount of pitchers being like, yeah, I'm not going to NL West unless it's for the Dodgers. I don't want to pitch. No, I mean, that makes sense. I would not want to have my ERA shell. Like, I would would, hate hate going to the AL East. Just murder a rose in all their lives. That'd be awful. What pitcher would willingly sign up for the AL East unless it's the Yankees and they're already giving you 300 mil? Like, Garrett Cole. Like, why would you go there? It just lowers your value. So... Uh, that's why I want to bring it. You got any any baseball news ever you want to go over? Uh, uh, I mean, no, you covered basically everything. Um, <clears throat> we can get a little bit in the NFL right now, and then we'll yeah. end up with March Madness. Best time of the year. Um, Best time of the year. Well, after the Super Bowl, but yeah. Wait, uh, and college football ever. playoffs. Breaking news. The Detroit Lions have re-signed Donovan Peoples-Jones. Breaking news. Fuck. We need to cover this. Fuck. Right? <laughs> DPJ. Staying in Michigan. That's what you like to hear. He appeared in just eight games in 2023, though. Bro, that's the the worst fucking news you could have given me today. I mean, I'm just saying, bro. DPJ was so, so good out of high school. And, yeah, should have been a Buckeye. Should have been a Buckeye. He honestly Uh, is still doing pretty well in the NFL in in the sample size that he's been given. Like, it's not bad. Um, I know. Just imagine if he went to a place and developed. Looking up. Uh, just looking at stuff going on uh, in the NFL right now. And a lot of things happened obviously, over the weekend. Uh, the NFL. A lot of things happened. Again. Obviously, uh, you you mentioned that Keenan Allen is now on the Chargers. Uh, well, fuck Bears. you guys. Bears. Fuck you guys. Keenan Allen. Sorry, on the yes, Bears. on the Bears. Yeah, fuck you guys. Um, Did you want Keenan, or are you scared of Keenan? I would rather not have Keenan in my division. Well, good thing is he'll only be playing for half of the time. So if you guys are playing <laughs> the Bears at the end of the but, year, but you guys, I it's... know you could have gotten the Bears to give you more than a fourth. I, That's like, what I thought too. Like, come on, I um, but Keenan's like now in the point, Bears. Great, him. great environment now. I don't know how their offensive line is, but like, besides the fact it's the Bears, fantastic place. But if this was like, take this team and stick it on like, oh yeah, I don't know. The Rams, what? just call them the Rams. If great place for a quarterback. Based, if they were big, okay. If they were just, ooh, could they? No, they couldn't break the New York Jets curse. They couldn't. They couldn't. If that. if they if they were just called the Los Angeles Rams, Rams, not fantastic Rams. place to yes. to have a quarterback. Go to <laughs> it's the sole fact they're called the Chicago Bears. Yeah, Caleb Williams. We'll see you later. It's it's your career is done, bud. Uh, but think, I'm I'm a little concerned. I am a little concerned, and then I have to should. remember that Matt Eberflus is their coach, and everything's okay. You're fine. You're. Ch- I'm fine. Ever, you're I'm ch- fine. I'm you fine. Think he should pull an Eli though. Like I where, think that it's a little bit more. Possibly go. Well, if look, like if Eli. you actually, if you want to think about it in like realistic terms, right? Well, now they can. one like Justin's going. Yeah, he's obviously going to be a bear. But but here's if we're thinking in realistic terms, one Chicago is a pretty big market, so you have marketability. Two, oh, yeah. this is. Probably one of the better teams to get to go to in that one of those percent. spots. Like there's actually like percent. stuff around you and whatnot. Um, so not really, but like so if you, like you make money and there's players for him to throw to no, and stuff. But like if, if the they, ownership's truly that bad, that's the only yeah. That's thing. that's the only thing. And on top of that, that no quarterback has thrown for four thousand yards in Chicago. But um, that, besides that those two things. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it, it's, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Um, you, wouldn't, but you wouldn't pull a big arch there? I would not. I would have if, if it was like. Caleb Williams' dad, would you pull a big arch? If it was like three months ago, I would have, but now I would not have. Yeah, like I, I, I definitely think though it's uh, one thing that kind of drew my attention. Uh, someone was just replying to like, you know, all the pictures of Caleb like crying and his fingernails painted being like QB1. Um. 
if those are the biggest knocks on you, that means you're a pretty good football player. If they can't knock your football playing, but it's your fingernails and stuff, you're pretty, you're pretty good. Uh, I, I, I like, you know, we've been over it a million times and I'm obviously very biased. Caleb was my college quarterback when I was in college, but he's really fucking good. He's really good. He's really good. He's really damn good. So if there's anyone that can break that 4,000 passing yard record, it's him. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how teams, like when they start pressuring him, the NFL, how that, cause that's been his problem is when he's been pressured, pressured, he has had problems. So, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm interested. Uh, he has another never trade. had a receiving room as talented as he's about to have in Chicago. So that should be exciting to see what he can do there. Uh, like, I, I'm not lying when I say this. 2022 USC offense, it was literally just Addison, 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 like every single play because J.A. was that good. I'm not taking anything away from J.A. here. I'm just saying, now that Caleb can actually have like a Keenan, I mean, that might be a dirty, dirty duo right there. Ke- Keenan's separation numbers last year, my God. I don't know how he was like number one in all the stats. It made zero sense to me. He's like 32 and like can't walk, and his shoulders like sticking. I'm gonna be pissed if I'm gonna be pissed if if the Bears opt to draft Caleb and a wide receiver still at nine. If there's anyone that has a worse coaching staff than the Chargers, though, not including the Commanders, it is the Bears. So like, yeah, you know, other than the Commanders, yeah, I I can't act like I can't act like the Commanders are better. You can't, you can't, you can't not, you can't not, you know, give them. I guess they're flowers in that scenario. No, oh, um, definitely flowers. At least under the Snyder regime, they were. Going they might be that. dead flowers, but yeah. Um, okay, speaking about trades, Vikings yeah, have had like, both of our teams Snyder involved in hired. trades uh, over the weekend. Uh, the Vikings traded for. I made a TikTok about this, and you most people already know about this. But the Vikings traded for the Texans' first round pick this year, number twenty three overall. Uh, they gave up, I believe, two seconds, and they traded a third rounder. Um, I mean, I think we already we did not we already had given up our third rounder this year. I think that was already gone. Uh, but we like I think we like moved in the fourth or something like that. Uh, but big moves for the Vikings. Uh, either now they have two first round picks, or most likely they will be going up to get a quarterback and be using both of them as leverage. Most people, including myself, highly doubt the Vikings would have just done that without having conversations with one of those top teams of being like, hey, what kind of capital do you want? Do you want first round picks, second round picks, whatever? And they mostly were like, we want a first round pick. So, yeah. Um, yeah so now the Vikings are in prime position to be able to trade up uh, and also works out much better because now instead of having to get like three first round picks over the next three years, they can give up these two and then maybe. Hopefully not, but maybe one next year. Um, mathematically, they don't have to, but it is mostly it is training up for a quarterback, and everybody knows that's what they want, so they're going to force them to pay more. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just so saying, it, if, if there was an offer, probably would make more sense near to the near to draft day. But I, I mean, if I'm the Vikings, I'm not unless it's five, like, unless it is unless it is with the Patriots for number three right now. I am not trading anything until the draft because yeah, I would be wait, afraid that the Giants or somebody would trade up and get that pick in front of me, and then my whole plan's out the window. So, like, I, but it's gonna be and, like okay today, eleven and twenty three for number four. Would you not take that? Today? I would take that. You would take that today. No, fear but like, I, I, it's at three. There, I, I, I mean, no. Like, if if they just told me two first round picks today, we won't ask for anything more, and you'll let you get the fourth overall pick. Yeah, fine, I'll do that. I, I don't the care. Going rate right now, them to eleven twenty three and another for a top. Well, five. mathematically, yeah. mathematically, picks five through picks five and four, you can trade up with just the two first round picks. Pick yeah. three, you would have to trade up two first rounders and a third to get that. That's the math, but I'm assuming three or four is going to ask for an additional first rounder. The Patriots a hundred percent ask for an additional first rounder and no Patriots fans. It is not trading Justin Jefferson for the third overall pick. If you want to get Justin Jefferson, you'll be giving us the third overall pick and your next four first rounders. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, um, um, there was one trade I saw, and I know this is false because they said the Chargers declined it, but they said that the Vikings offered the uh, number 11 pick, number 23, and Justin Jefferson for the number whatever pick. I'm like, that five. obviously did not ha- obviously did not happen. What the fuck are we talking about? Uh, but n- number two, uh, like, this would not happen, but like, if there was an offer just Jefferson for number five, like I kind of see why the Chargers would insta take. Kind of see why. What? What? Wait, 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 what? Just with the cap space, I'm not sure if we could even resign you, him. But like, you're saying you're saying you can only kind of see why the the Chargers would want Justin Jefferson at five for the fifth well, pick. I, I'm. This is what I'm thinking about the Chargers. If I gave you a trade straight up Justin Jefferson for the fifth pick, if you say no, you are fucking stupid. No, no, I know, I know. I'm just thinking, though, from from a Chargers perspective here, let's say there was actually a Chargers-Vikings trade on the table, and I'm thinking from the Chargers perspective here, like, Justin Jefferson is off the table. I, I am arguably inclined to be more interested in, like, Jordan Addison and, like, a well, third here's the deal. or a second. Here's like, the deal. Those those players, players though, like Jordan Addison, after having you know, the they, season like, that he never had, like, traded, like ever. He he's those like Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, Justin Jefferson, all are not on the trade block. Like you cannot get them. They are untouchable. Those three are untouchable. Christian Darisaw, untouchable. Brian O'Neill, I would be very surprised. Like any of those core he's pieces, paid, correct? Brian O'Neill, or is yes. he still okay? No, so he's, he's getting paid. technically is. I know they wouldn't. Now, now, but, like, it's the fact that that's, like, a top tandem for tackles in the league. Like, anything that is Dude, necessary Darisaw for these... What, the formal uh, cap hit is robbery. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's essentially... It's robbery. <laughs> like, any of those players that are needed to have a good core around the quarterback are not up for sale. All of those guys are not up for sale. It's essentially so, just any any player on a rookie deal is not up for sale, essentially. That matters. I'm not talking Lewis scene, but you get what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, offensively, offensively, okay, at least. Okay. Uh, um, like, but uh, talk it, about Chargers untouchables. Like, shit. I. Diane Henley. Break breaking news. Jonah Williams plans to sign with the Vikings. He oh, that happened attack. like yesterday. Oh, oh, missed that. Wait, how's that going? That's work? a defensive end. Jonah Williams, the Rams. offensive tackle. I'm There's just also read. one from the Rams. That's a defensive end. I just read offense tackle Jonah Williams plans to sign with the Vikings. There's but no. I could have sworn. I just no. It's it's the defensive end. I, I someone someone some I could have sworn Jonah Williams just signed someone. Tell me what account you round that you you read that off of. Oh yeah, Jonah Williams is a Cardinal. Yeah, no. Tom Pelissero? What account? Tom Telesero. Tom Pelissero? No, t- t- is that like Telesco's alt account? T- Tom Telesero? Tom Pelissero? No, it's Jonah Williams, the Rams defensive end. Yeah, I was about to say, that doesn't add up. Why do you have three tackles? Boom. Way to clear that up. Way to clear that up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless you're trying but, to run 2021 Ohio State's offense, I couldn't run the ball. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. Yeah, we're playing about a fullback now. Um... But yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I like I said in my TikTok, uh, there are a couple different scenarios. Biggest doomsday one is that they can't trade up. All quarterbacks are gone, and they're stuck with their picks at eleven and twenty three. In which case, they'll probably take Dallas Turner, and then Bo Nix or Michael Penix at twenty three. Um, but I mean, ideally, like my favorite, my favorite situation would be for them to be able to get Drake May. I want Drake May, and I would not love to trade up to have give up a lot of assets to get JJ McCarthy. So that's, that is my opinion. You can have a different opinion. I just think that if they're going to trade assets and a lot of assets at that, it makes or more sense Jane to get. Trey I mean, if Jamie Daniels is there, yeah, still, but I'm hearing some rumors right now that, well, just not rumors. So let's just think about this. Okay. Drake may Sam Howell, both North Carolina quarterbacks definitely have some type of relationship i don't know if they were ever at north carolina together yeah. uh, for at least they overlapped year. i think that at last season year. but they have a relationship now you tell me what you're thinking because i'm kind of going one direction but it could be the other in my opinion if the commanders wanted drake may i would have probably considered 
keeping Howell. I understand they got a pretty solid return for what they could get out of Howell. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I I I don't think it's you know, that it's, deep. Okay, okay. I don't think it's that deep at all. Uh, other news, other news. Uh, one that you care about because your dream is officially dead. But Mike Vrabel is now a consultant for the Browns. Uh, so rest in peace, that dream. I thought we were going to get our cliff just as an analyst. Yeah, but that's, that's tough. Uh, bigger news, I'll, biggest yeah. news. Oh yeah, let's do. Let's go from bigger to small. The Hollywood Browns, the smallest. But I have a lot. Uh, of outside of Leighton Van Der Esch, the uh, second biggest retirement of the weekend. Aaron Donald uh, has retired. From the Rams, uh, arguably one of the, if not the greatest defensive tackle of all time. Uh, I think is no he was longer the greatest player of his generation. From I'm going to get his exact Watt playing generation. Time. So I, I'm going to get his exact playing time from 2014 to 2023. There was no one like Aaron Donald. I've never seen a three tech do shit like that in my life. I've never seen a man take on double teams and eat that shit up like it's breakfast and he wants the double team because it makes him look even better. I've never seen anything like him in my life. He is what like when I first started playing football ever, it was just like if I could be 0.0000001% of Aaron Donald, I'd be the best player on the team. I obviously didn't even get to anywhere near 0.001, but you're resting at zero. Yeah, negative numbers. We're we're in the negatives. Uh, we're in the red. But Aaron Donald, just the amount of attention you have to give that man if you're an offensive coordinator is unreal. You can't run to his side. He he takes he takes away multiple gaps. He just now, eliminates it. And if you partner now, we up, we had heard pass rusher. Well, guess what? You have to double team him. Well, also he him. has one of the he has one of the <laughs> cleanest pictures of all time, standing in the backfield at a Bengals uh, Rams joint practice with two Bengals helmets in both of his hands, ready to clobber people. One of the greatest pictures of all time in any sport, especially football. One of the so, greatest interviews of all time is when, pardon my take, they had Aaron Donald and DK Metcalf on. And they first asked DK Metcalf, "How much can you bench?" And he's like, uh, "I think I, I think I max like like three seventy five, three fifty. I don't fucking know what he said." Then they get to Aaron Dahl, and they're like, uh, "So how much do you bench?" And he's just like, 500 reps." They're like, "What?" Like, he's what? like, "Yeah, I take reps <laughs> of 500. They're like, "What bench?" He's like, "Yeah, I take reps, sets of 500." I know Should've DK was just sitting there. Should've DK been banned was banned like, from the NFL once they heard that. Should've DK been was just sitting there, just yeah. Immediate PED test after they after yeah, the DK NFL is, saw that. DK immediately was just like, he's in my division, and like, there's a chance he might tackle me sometimes. Uh, like DK was like a rookie at the time. It was. It's you know you know the Ralph meme from Simpsons. Are like I'm in danger. Yes, that's that. Exactly that's the that's the clip of Gino danger. going, oh shit, when yeah. Aaron Donald's coming up on him. Yes. Um, I mean Aaron Donald like. We it's a shame it's the March Madness episode. We're not going to give this man enough flowers for what he actually deserves, but he he was the best player of his era, of the Aaron Donald 2014 to 2023 era. Perfect, perfect five year or ten year career. Ended on the yeah. Dot. I mean, there were rumors last life. year. There was rumor two years ago after he won the Super Bowl, yeah. he was like, "I'm going to retire." Didn't manifest. Last year, same thing. Didn't manifest. Finally, he has retired. Don't blame him. Um, I don't really know if the Rams are in the exact same place as they were competing yeah. wise. Um, but great career, phenomenal athletes. Um, and Last all around, I, I mean, first ballot hall. Him out. He has missed a total of eight career games in his NFL career. Iron Man. What the fuck? I didn't even realize that. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. Uh, However, he did miss seven uh, or six of those eight games in the past two seasons. So that might be why he's like, all right. Which probably would lead to him. Probably retire. a message to him for how he holds himself up to his standards. He's like, all right, if I can't even get through a full season, this isn't for me. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Chase Young to New Orleans, New Orleans Buckeyes back up and moving, and uh, Hollywood Brown to the Chiefs. Um, Marquez Valdez Scantling was taken up around 11, 12 million cap hit for the Chiefs. They just got rid of that and replaced him with a much better deep threat wide receiver, Hollywood Brown. So, oh, I thought you were going to say Kadarius Tony. My bad. My bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just say Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore. We'll see you in the XFL. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think their season actually is about to start up. So you guys better get on the phone now. 
That's um, that's a mid-season acquisition over there. Straight up, Braxton Berrios is way more valuable than either of them. Like maybe combined. He's he got re-signed by the, by the Dolphins too. Yeah, I bet Alex Earl wanted to stay in Miami, so I, I <laughs> she ran, she rang up just hundred percent. She called up Mikey McDee and was just like, "Braxton better fucking be on this team." You know how many views I got in the Miami Dolphins this past year? Like you you need me. <laughs> Honestly, I want to see those. Yeah. Things. Alex Earl. Can't Miami wait for Marquise, Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown to be there. Then you have Rish, a Rishi Rice, and then you're going to have Xavier Worthy, and we're just all going to hate everything. Dude, I'm just saying, I've already accepted Xavier Worthy to Kansas City. I'm not going to be surprised when it happens. I know that's going to happen. I've just... All right. The fastest fastest wide receiver in NFL Combine history, officially. <laughs> Can you imagine? I, I think if John Ross went to the went to the Chiefs while Mahomes was there, he might actually have been like a very good wide receiver. It might have been Chris Carter who had like the unofficial forty record. I think. What? Let like, I'm forgetting who it was. It may be Joey Galloway. Ooh, I think it's Joey. What Galloway. are what, what? I'm talking. Yeah, they claim Joey Galloway ran a four one eight. I'm just thinking, because what? Worthy just broke the record. What was the record? 422 Ross. Now 422. Unworthy. Like, oh, fuck. It's either Bo Jackson. It's either Bo Jackson or like fucking Herschel Walker. And they ran like an You're... unofficial 412. Yeah. If, if, I mean, we want to talk about unofficial things. Let's go debate Will Chamberlain's 100 point game because there's well, the same amount of happen. documentation as that, that as, as there are those. So that didn't uh, happen. I it mean, an if, we, if we go, it wasn't, they were just like, he was so fucking good in this game. Let's just say he had a hundred that that's what it was. He would, he may have had the greatest performance in NBA history, but you cannot convince me he had a hundred that night. BBN big blue nation. Let's go. All right. Time to start off, kick off the March madness segment. It is the best time of the year ever. It is the best time of the year without question, without debate. Um, we have the leader of Big Blue Nation, uh, Mr. Perry in the building. Uh, he'll be joining us shortly. I got a lot of questions. Got a lot of questions um, for our very own Perry. Uh, but okay, uh, we're getting him in right now. Uh, you're muted right now, Everett, but that, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, all right, there we go. There we go. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we're good now. All right, Perry, it is a Yeah, for pleasure. everybody for everybody listening, for everybody watching, Perry was on one time. We asked him if he had, he was uh now. if if he supported Will Levis's coffee mayonnaise addiction if that was a normal thing in Kentucky. Yeah, we, uh, we he said it was not a normal out. thing. Is that native to um, the Kentucky uh or not? You, you said it was not. It was not. They no. you do not claim that. Absolutely not. Uh that yeah, was may, his may one coffee not quite um what Kentucky is supposed to be known for. Uh but and that it's was his one about. time on the podcast. Now he's having a, a full segment. So yeah, it, it's time to have you on for the real Kentucky talk. All right. Uh, Kentucky as a state lives, breathes, sleeps basketball. So I, I don't think there's anyone better to bring on than a proud member of BBN. Uh, I just want to start off. We, we got to get the obvious out of the way. Coach Cal, is, is, is it almost done? Are we almost, are we almost running dry with the Coach Cal Kentucky era? Uh, what are we thinking? So the fan base stands at a pretty big divide right now. Um, we're basically thinking if Cal can get us pretty far, in the lead eight, the final four, a lot of the fans are going to be are going to be pretty content with him on the keeper. Um, if we're a second weekend exit, it's going to be rough. The fans are not going to be about it. Um, they're going to be looking to hire somebody new. So that's where we're at. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at this. Kentucky roster I look uh past couple years bringing in Shibwe kind of going all in on the portal right now this Kentucky team a lot of young freshman guards seems like a classic Kentucky team seems like exactly how Cal drew it up back in the John Wall Boogie Cousins days but if he can't get it done this year uh I don't even know who could be a potential next option at Kentucky I, like I I honestly don't exactly know Is okay. it coach is it Coach Cal who gets the guys to Kentucky, or is it just BBN, Kentucky basketball, that gets the guys to come? I That's a great question. That's a great question. I mean, he's he's been known for a long time to be the recruiter in college yeah. basketball, and he consistently puts out that, you know, 
what he cares about more than anything is the development of his players. Um, and we as fans know that. Um, we sort of come to terms with that. Um, his interest is in winning games as well, but more than anything, he wants to get his guys to the league. Um, that's what he's most interested in. Yeah, you hear to hear first. He does not care about March Madness. <laughs> he does not care about winning the national championship. All right. I, I will just say I was looking over the other day of a list of current Kentucky Wildcats in the NBA. It is startling how many superstars went to Kentucky. But among this team, I got to ask, who is your favorite player? Mine's Reed Shepard, so no, you don't need to say Reed. But Reed Shepard, Reeves, Rod Dillingham, who you who you like in the or is it not one of the top three scores? It might not be. I don't know. Well, obviously, well, since you picked Reed already, I won't pick him. I mean, <laughs> Reed's obviously my top choice. He's from freshman London. Of the year. Uh, uh, yeah, freshman of the year. Um, he lives 30, 45 minutes from my house. So, like, you know, I love the Kentucky uh, representation. You got to love that, especially in the hometown school. So, um, you know, I, I love Antonio Reeves. A lot of people don't know this, um, but Antonio Reeves will go down as one of the top six, seven scorers in the history of the school. Um, and he's, I mean, he's, he's legit. And I didn't realize that until about a month, a month and a half ago, but, um, that, that he's been a huge aspect of our team. A lot of, a, a lot of talk about him, um, being one of the better players in the SEC, one of the top scorers in the SEC, um, love Antonio Reeves. He's, he's a good constant. It's amazing. He'll quietly score 20 plus points in a game. Yeah, I'm just looking at his numbers, shooting 44% from three, over 50% as a guard, which I feel like is a pretty solid metric on if that guy's actually good at basketball or not. Uh, but what one thing I guess that I, I look at a lot when I look at college basketball, I hate any team reliant on one big man. I'm fading the shit out of Purdue because I know when Zach Eady gets two fouls in the first five minutes of their second round matchup, they're not going to know what the fuck to do when he has to come out of the game early. I do really like how guard centric Kentucky is, but do you have any fear if Trey Mitchell can get in foul trouble early? I always, I'm always very concerned about maybe the depth or lack of depth of big men on many of these teams. Do you have any concern with foul trouble, like foul trouble? Cause that's, that's one thing I look at when it comes to March Madness. Sure, I understand that, and I think the nice part about Kentucky is we have a lot of depth at our big man, uh, at our big man spot. We've got uh, Zvonimir Visic um, from Croatia, we call him the Croatian sensation. Um, he had an incredible performance against Georgia in SEC play, one that will go down as one of the most incredible phenomenon to ever occur at Rupp Arena. Um, we've got Aaron Bradshaw, um, who came in as a really high top prospect, um, played well in several games early in the season. Um, it sort of slipped off, but I, I think he's looking to explode in the tournament if possible. Um, yeah. And we've yeah. got Ugo uh, Gano and Yenso, who has been, who's turned out to be the top big man for Kentucky this year. Um, not a lot of, not a lot of fans saw that coming, but he's been a really good rim protector. He's starting to average a couple blocks a game. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm seeing right now. I'm a, I'm a walk back what I just said. 2.7 blocks a game in 18 minutes uh, for a big Ugo. So uh, you know what? I, Kentucky, you guys actually might be able to make it a little bit deeper of a run than I was initially thinking. I kind of like your draw a lot. Everett, Everett has some strong opinions on Marquette this year, but I, I think that's a pretty well, solid draw for you guys for that well, two seed matchup. Hey, you don't like Marquette. Uh, I sure I think cool. Marquette, I think Marquette is isn't a decent team. I know I've had conversations with Perry about it, about Marquette. Well, the I know great Perry's news a little, is, little, little concerned about Marquette. But the great news is, Perry, you won't even match up against Marquette because Shaka Smart hasn't made a Sweet 16 since like VCU in 2012. So you won't even have to face them. Uh, you guys got Texas Tech uh, or NC State to worry about. That that one, honestly, these 6 11 games be are terrifying. I don't know who's winning any of these shit. Uh, Everett swears by Duquesne. Uh, I'm not. I'm not too high on them. But uh, <laughs> that's not just me. There's a, there's a long stay. See, Perry Perry, Perry will understand. We, we've been on a Duquesne. There's train a there's a point. yeah. There's a Duquesne train going on oh, down in New Orleans right okay. now. Oh, uh, it, it's it's more of a community type of upset pick. Okay, okay. I, I I can I can accept that more. I'll be honest. Uh, if I were to have, I guess, one last Kentucky question. Uh, 
how the fuck did you guys miss out on Cooper Flat? What the hell? You guys could have saved the whole sport, preventing him from going to fucking Duke. Yeah, we um, even saw him when we were in Las Vegas. You, you didn't want to go up to him and, and try to recruit him over Kentucky. That's on you, man. I didn't even know we saw him in Las Vegas, if I'm being totally honest. I had no idea. Um, you know, uh, poor recruiting job by you. It's interesting because I, I haven't paid a lot of attention to Cal's incoming class next year. I try and stay in the moment, focus on one team at a time. I'll take a, um, I'll take a look. I, I bet it's at minimum the number two class, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a take a quick look. No, probably. I'm assuming his class is already so filled that um, Cooper Flag saw he was not going to be the standout on next year's Kentucky team. I'm assuming that's what sort of drove him away from from Kentucky. Um, Duke's going to be something to watch next year. I'll tell you that much. He's a good, yeah. he's a good player. He's yeah. Incredible. I, I really hate Duke. Uh, I've never liked Duke ever. Uh, I, I'll be honest. I didn't quite put this into memory, but I recently found out like etched into mine that Duke Leitner hit that shot over Rick Patino, Kentucky. Now Duke's now I, now I officially hate Duke more than anything. I didn't know they did that to us BBN. So now I'm all in fuck Duke team Kentucky checkered checkers everything like one thing that's really interested me moving forward with college football changes is that shit we already saw it like this year adding Houston to the big 12 the big 12 is about to just casually add Arizona into it next year uh big 12 is about to be beyond stacked uh SEC though they're adding Texas and Oklahoma um can we just see BBN staying on top of the sec for a while here i know lamont paris south carolina making a little little bit of news right now not really not bbn news but i i kind of feel like moving forward bbn basketball with the conference realignment kind of dodged any major bullet like if duke and north carolina go to the big 10 kentucky's running the sec forever there's been a lot of talk in the fandom um about kentucky not being the gold standard in college basketball as of late, we still rely on our history to absolutely trump anybody in an argument as we've won 31 conference championships in basketball. Um, no one's even close to that. But what I will say is um, it would be great for Kentucky to step up and dominate as these new schools come into the SEC to, to try and regain our status as the gold standard in college basketball. So I'm hoping that that can, that can, remain true i'm hoping that we can continue to dominate the sec but it's going to take some uh it's going to take some real grit from cal or whoever's next I coach cat <laughs> coach cat you could you imagine or oh even better jay if, if that happened i think duke fans Kentucky, jay Ryan. i think i think duke fans might actually burn like oh, oh everything yeah. to the ground but coach k would then like while the duke fans are like calling him out coach k would then re-scold the Duke fans back being like, shut up, listen to me. I'm your <laughs> God. It, shut up. I'm Coach if there's K. if there's anything I know about that rivalry and which only stems from really the Leitner shot. Yeah. Um they the BBN would not accept Coach K as an ex coach. Anything that touches Coach K, they can't stand. I mean, so. the the real the real next hire would be Juwan Howard's coming back. He he's getting the Kentucky job. <laughs> coming back where uh, uh yeah i mean jawan uh okay all right Let, let's 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 wrap up the episode on on a on a note that most people are are going to actually care about uh let's give our let's start with the elite eight let's go from elite eight to championship pick uh matchups here um, oh, oh oh before we quite get i i just want to go over a, a quick little fun fact trapezoid of excellence thing that I, I okay yeah that's very important very for this uh actually very first real quick it's an absolute disgrace how six Mountain West teams got in, but only three Big East teams got in. Disgusting, gross, vile. I puked when I saw that. Uh, but okay, moving on. Trapezoid of Excellence. If you're unaware of the Trapezoid of Excellence, they put all 350, however many teams, uh, D1 college basketball teams there are, they put them on a giant scale, uh, pace versus Ken Palm net rate. And on this scale, in the top quadrant, is the trapezoid of excellence where you're in top percentile of net rating efficiency and you're not too slow and you're not too fast in terms of tempo pace. So in the trapezoid of excellence this year, these are the teams that qualify. UConn, Houston, Purdue, Auburn, Iowa State, Tennessee, and Gonzaga. 
Duke is barely on the cusp, but they didn't quite make it. Uh, but those teams. In terms of Ken Palm, of, I believe, going back to Kemba Walker, uh, every single champion was top 21 in offensive efficiency and top 31 in defensive efficiency. These are the teams that fit those metrics. UConn, Houston, Purdue, Auburn, Arizona, Duke, Creighton, and Marquette. Now, these are the teams that fit both the trapezoid of excellence and the Ken Palm metrics. UConn, Houston, Purdue, and Auburn. Those are the four teams that can win it all. So that's what that's what history says. Okay. Just pointing that out there. UConn, Harry's Houston, going through right Purdue, now. Check. He's, he's editing. He's editing the U- UConn, Houston, <laughs> Purdue, Auburn. Now, UConn and Auburn may match up. They may match up, which will make it very they easy. most likely will. They they most likely will. So, but this is one trend that I've also found. I'm looking through recent recent uh, top one, two, three, four seeds who've gotten bounced early in March Madness or have gotten bounced uh, going back to the COVID year, so past three tournaments. And one thing I've noticed is that low-tempo teams usually tend to beat high-tempo teams, but low-tempo teams have a tendency of getting upset by high-offensive, low-defensive efficiency teams. It's a very weird trend, But I'm going to go over just past couple of years, some very high paced teams and who they lost to. And we're going to be going into this year. And I hate to say it, Perry, but BBN might be one of these high tempo teams uh, and some slower tempo teams they may have to face. But real quick, last year, number one seed Alabama, they were number fourth in tempo in the country. They lost to number five San Diego State, who was 262nd in the country in pace. Arizona last year, 13th in the country in pace. They lost to Princeton, 15th seed round one, 187th in the country in pace. Gonzaga 2022, fifth in pace. This is the outlier. They lost to Arkansas, who was 28th in pace. That's just the must bus, baby. That's just the must bus. I know you hate the must bus, Perry, but sometimes the must bus gets rolling. Uh, Must is all right. I like like must. This one's very, very, very big, though. Arizona 2022. Number nine team in tempo. They lost to number five Houston, who was 338th in the country in tempo. Okay. Going on, number 11 lost to 258, number seven to 213, 19 to 213, eight to 260. You get the trend. Okay. You get the trend. High tempo loses to low tempo. This year, there are five extremely high tempo teams who are all going up against very slow teams in the first round. New Mexico against Clemson even though New Mexico is favorited, they're higher in Ken Palm and they're the 11 seed. The metrics say Clemson's going to win that game. Alabama, not their first round matchup, but second round against St. Mary's, Perry. Alabama's the number nine offensive tempo. St. Mary's is 358th. It's going to be a drastically different game. I, I'm not sure if Alabama is used to playing a game that slow, uh, but I know Everett, you were bringing that up with St. Mary's, Alabama. You were thinking there's no fucking way St. Mary's can be Alabama. I was, I was yes, thinking that. I do agree, just name wise. But if we're going off of tempo, well, to be fair, name wise, St. Mary's is a tonight. huge basketball name wise team. So like that's not, huh? St. Mary's I know they is won the West Coast Conference this year. No, but St. Mary's is typically yeah. in March Madness. So I'm saying when you think about, but what I'm saying when you think about basketball, like okay. St. Mary's is not necessarily an abnormal team to think okay. about. I, I get you mean there. Uh, but this is Kentucky. Number 11 team tempo. They're gonna be they could match up against Texas Tech in that second round, 234 tempo in the country. If, let, let me just check who is who is who's Texas Tech playing? NC State. Let me see. If NC State is a fast team, then you're you're the biggest Wolfpack fan I know. I'm a little concerned about the Wolfpack. The Wolfpack have uh, DJ Burns, I think is his name. He's the big man for them. Yeah. Uh, I like our big men, like I said, but uh, I'm a little concerned about their defense against them. NC State, 137th in tempo. Perry, if NC State beats Texas Tech, Kentucky is going on to the Sweet 16. (laughs) But if they have a date with Texas Tech around, I'm not, it's not a guaranteed L, but. It's just two stylistically completely different teams. And when they match up, who knows? Who knows if it'll be high tempo in Kentucky's favor or if it'll be low tempo? Who knows? 
we'll have to wait and find out. But I've just noticed that these high-tempo teams, they tend to get upset by the really slow-playing teams. They're just completely different styles of basketball, and then they meet up, and it's like, what the fuck are we even doing, guys? But that's my fear. If I'm ready to say, though, if NC State beats Texas Tech round one, Kentucky is going to the Elite Eight. I hope so. I'm out of our division. Uh, I think the teams I'm most concerned about, I am concerned about Marquette, um, but especially with a healthy Tyler Kolick. Um, and then Houston, for the most part, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about. I know they're a physical team. Uh, we don't match up well with physical teams. So we'll see. I, I would say one thing about Houston is that even though they play tough, they are very physical. I was just looking at their overall roster. They're not necessarily like too tall. They, like they've got a lot of six three, six four, six five guys playing thirty plus minutes, and mm-hmm. I, like I, I wonder that matchup if, if if they could maybe get bullied a little bit down low. Even though it's Houston, I know they play Houston basketball, but I I wonder with with a team who is a little short maybe. Maybe I have some concerns there. I don't know. I usually like to fade big men, reliant teams, because they get in foul trouble, then they come out, and then they don't know what to do. But... You're just trying to support Kentucky here. We get it. We get it. You're trying You're trying to talk. And we love it. it. I you're love trying it. to talk it off. Reed Shepard. Uh, ever Fun fact of the day, Reed Shepard, he's shooting over 50% from three this year. He leads Kentucky in assists. Gross. Per game. One freshman Gross. of the year in the SEC. Phenomenal. Two and a half steals a game. He's excellent. Uh, in only 20 minutes f- too, but yeah. I have a fantastic statistic for you that I heard um, the other day. Uh, so this was before the SEC tournament, but going into the postseason, Reed Shepard was 52.6% uh, from, from three. Mm-hmm. Um, he is the first D1 freshman to average better than four rebounds, four assists, two steals, and two made threes in the game since Jay Williams, 1999 2000. Wow, Jay Willett, that's funny. <laughs> that's back. Funny. Duke guy, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jay Williams had some pretty <laughs> strong opinions about Kyle Filipowski on how he should be protected more from the court storm, uh, storming the other week. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll save the court storming for later, you know. Uh, uh, should be banned. Uh, I, I will say, though, my lock of the tournament is St. Mary's over Alabama, round of 32. The, like, that is crazy, the tempo differences. That's my lock of the tournament. Uh, okay the head on that one you want to go head to head you want to <laughs> i mean hey you you seem to have done a little bit more research on that <laughs> than i have so i think i'm okay i think i'm okay uh okay for the sake of time i was just like for the sake of time um over let's do final four instead of elite eight let's do final four picks uh we'll start with uh perry as our guest and we'll move around um if we have similar picks obviously you don't need to break them down but uh, yeah, Perry, you can start here. So, um, out of the East, I've got what I think is the best team in college basketball right now. Uh, they're they're out of the East. Um, I think Dan Hurley is quite literally incredible. I, I got to watch him. a couple of UConn games this year. He's incredible. You, you I mean, got, oh, you got to get shit. That's so sick. Yeah, like I'm just happy the Big East is back on top, even though they only got three teams in the tournament. The actual fuck ESPN, but hey. Uh, we're going to get this shit done. Or CBS, sorry, my bad. Misspoke there. Out of the West, I've got Arizona. I originally had North Carolina, um, but I'm thinking Arizona, Tommy Lloyd, he hasn't done it the past couple of years. I think he can pull out of the region. That's what I've got in the West. In the Midwest, I think uh, I think Painter finally does it. I've got Purdue out of the Midwest. And typically I'm a downer on, on Purdue. Um, but I think potentially this is this is the era they can do it. And then out of the South, uh, you know, I had a team that I was just concerned about with Kentucky, Houston. I think I'm picking Kentucky to come out of uh, to come out of the yeah. South. He's making I an alteration. Making He's making a game time alteration to his pick right now. I'm staring at his bracket. Uh, it currently says Houston. It had said Houston. Um, making the change still has them losing to Purdue though. Uh, anyways, Grant, you can go next, uh, oh, with your we'll final four bracket. For save winners for we the can end. save winners for the end. Yes. All right. So, uh, I hate to say it. I'm basic. 
got UConn coming out of the East. I know, I know. Point fingers. Uh, out of the West, uh, we'll start with the left side. Out of the West, this may come to a shock to you too, but I got the Baylor Bears coming out of the West region. Uh, I actually don't even have a matchup between Baylor and Arizona. I think Nevada is going to beat them in the second round. Uh, but I love Baylor. I absolutely love Baylor. When I look at their metrics and how they stack up, they're a team that can pose a lot of problems for an Arizona and North Carolina. Also, forgot to mention uh, Arizona uh, this year. Yeah, uh, number 16th in pace this country. Nevada's number 245. Uh, that's a big on the pace. That. Very, very big on the pace. Ryder dying the saying, pace like, this year. That when you got teams going a little too, like Arizona in the trapezoid of excellence, they're in a little circle called they recruited track athletes, not basketball players. They're just sprinting up and down the court the whole fucking time. Uh, we're here to play basketball, guys. You got to hit threes, and I know Caleb Love can't do that. So uh, that's who I got coming out of the West. Uh, out of the South, I, I'm going to have to change this. I got Houston as of right now. I got Houston winning the whole thing as of right now, but I'm not too not too sold on that, not going to lie. I know you're not going to like to hear that, Perry. Uh, but – this one's the biggest shock. I'm going to change this, but I got Creighton coming out of the Midwest right now. Uh, that's not staying. Uh, but I got <laughs> no confidence in Purdue, zero confidence in Tennessee. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who's winning that shit. I'll Maybe go. Gonzaga uh, does it. Uh, yeah, when they get first rounded to Mc, by McNeese, it's going to be a little complicated. Hey, uh, okay. Most common five twelve. I do love McNeese. Wins. I do love McNeese. The most common five twelve never wins. Okay, true, but uh, I don't think Zaga is as That's why kind of GCU filled as... over St. Mary's and GCU over Alabama, folks. Come on, Grant can't. We've all seen those videos. That's like the uh, coolest okay. stadium ever. Out of out of the East, I got UConn. I'm gonna be. I mean, every, I think everybody around everybody has UConn. Uh, originally, originally, I did have Iowa State with a with a upset pick there, uh, but I changed it back. Uh, out of the West, uh, I had changed it to Arizona. I did I did see Perry's uh, board, and it made me reflect a little bit, and then I changed it back to you, uh, to UNC. Um, I, I will say, those trapezoid of excellence, like Ken Palm things, that's for the natty winner, not for no, the yeah. final four. So that no, yeah, yeah. Me. So just your yeah, natty yeah. pick should probably so, be. So UConn, UConn versus Purdue UNC on, on that left side. I'm on the right side. In the southern region, I've got Marquette. Uh, that, is, that is TBD, though. Uh, I, I'm not overly uh, sold on anybody really uh, in, in that side. Shaka Smart won't be allowed to play defense for Marquette like he has been doing <laughs> in the Big East tournament. So you got to keep that in mind. There's only five people on the court for March Madness, not six. Right now I have Marquette. And out of the Midwest, I have Kansas coming out of the Midwest. Wow. Um, what? what a pick. What a pick. Season number one, Kansas, Hunter Dickinson. Uh, wow. Okay. Okay. I have them upsetting Purdue and then going on to beat Tennessee on their way to the final four. I mean, Hunter Dickinson and Zach Eady, they've, they've matched up against each other. So, Hey, maybe Kansas does have a little bit of scouting on Purdue. We'll see. Maybe Bill self's toupee can give them some nice <laughs> luck in the region. Get them out. Yeah. I um, low key think this is the worst Kansas team. Maybe of Bill self's tenure. I can't, I like this team's not too great in my opinion. Uh, but Hey, I like it. I like the pick though, Everett. Uh, I'll, I can I can start with the with the matchups. I'll, I'll have UConn versus Marquette in the finals. Uh, that's still TBD, like I said with Marquette TBD. Um, I have UConn winning it all. First time in what what do you say? Twenty years for it's back to back champions. So seven, uh, almost twenty. So uh, almost twenty years yeah, for back to back championships. Uh, it Al is Horford, it is due. Uh, it is due for a come around again uh, that's my my expectation with a total point number at 123 to note last oh, year i said 133 oh, no and it was 135 last year so oh it was close look at you. All I'm saying. Look at you look at you uh i guess i'll go my pick now right now i got houston being uconn but i'm gonna change that to houston beating baylor big 12 natty yeah I think Baylor can make a run right now. Mate, what, they're going to get bounced in the first round, knowing how this works, but they're still in it today. My bracket's still perfect as of right now, folks, so can't come at me. And one of them, one of the 55,000 that you've made, is it, it, will, it will work. 
Yeah, this year I'm only making 40. I'm going <laughs> to make a limit this year. Last year I hit like 730. I was on vacation. I was like, guys, cannot go out. Bracket time. I don't care if we're in college. Yeah, you were sitting bracket there on time. the airplane making brackets. Yeah, I mean, on the way back, thank God I wasn't able to watch the games. I started off my March Madness last year 0 for 3, missed the first three games all on the flight. Thank God I missed all of it or else it would have been bad. Would have been a bad start, bad start, but yeah. It's my turn. Yeah, I perked you up. <laughs> so I'm going with Everett. Uh, UConn's going to win it all, and they're going back to back. I, lo- I just over over love over Purdue. Sorry, I had to, I had to get the okay. statement that Purdue's beating Kentucky out of you. If, so I'm, if I'm a betting man this March, which I am in multiple different bracket pools, uh, hey, we don't I'm, condone that. We don't condone that on the podcast, right? It's I, not condoned. It's not well, condoned. Half of us do. Um, a third of us. <laughs> Two thirds of us. Two thirds. Third of us. Third, third of us for 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 podcast policy. Okay. Third of us. All right, only yeah. a third of us. Sorry. And yeah. UConn's beating Purdue. Total points, 165. I think UConn's got a high-powered offense. Purdue does, too. I think I think they're going high. Uh, yeah, in my final matchup with Houston Baylor, I didn't get my point. I got 143. I know Houston's – they like to suffocate teams. They like to choke you out. But uh, Baylor, uh, once again, the theme of the episode, tempo. Dead even tempo, 187. Fucking perfect. Top top ten offensive efficiency. They they fit the final four mold. I I'm so in on this Baylor Bears team. I'm I'm way too in on this Baylor Bears team. Uh my fucking god, I love this team. God. I know that eh, there's no way they lose to Colgate and Big B Z in the first round. There's just there's <laughs> no way. <laughs> there's zero percent chance they lose. Oh, you can expect a text from them if that happens. There's if that if Colgate can finally win like their first fucking March Madness game over Baylor, fine. It would be it would win. be the team that you, you chose to win it all. It would be. It I, I would will, be. I will just say last year I picked Houston to win the national championship, which I did as well. Okay, doing it again, but it's just <laughs> it, like, can't, it can't fail twice in a row. I know if I pick Houston, like really commit to it, they're getting bounced like Sweet Sixteen at late. Like they're not making it to the Elite Eight if I pick them. I know they're not. That's just how it, this shit works. I will say, yeah. if I'm going to give myself a little bit of flowers, 2018, I picked Michigan to lose to Villanova in the Natty, and it happened. And ever since, it's just gone down, so downhill. Like, I, I don't think I've broken – I don't think I've broken, like, 600 points on that ESPN bracket since. It, it's been bad. It's been very bad. But, but, yeah. It's the best time of the year. It's the best time of the year. Everyone has a perfect bracket as of right now. So. Uh, okay, with that – Except Stephen, so much a. Smith. Stephen A. Smith put Texas A&M in the final four. That shit's already busted. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I, I, I had, to, had to clear that. <laughs> how to get that point you out. You got to stick to the league. With that, thank you guys so much for watching. Listen to Five Stars. You can find us on Spotify, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, and on Instagram at Waterway Pod. We post new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube and all podcast platforms. Make sure to subscribe to us and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single episode. You can follow me and Grant on Twitter at Everstakes and at Waterboy Grant for our own content. We post new TikToks every Tuesday to Sunday unless one of us forgets. Uh, so make sure to check us out there, including all of our offseason wish lists, which may or may not be up to date now with all the free agency uh, things going on. We post on Instagram as well. Uh, there's some exclusive content there as well as some exclusive content on TikTok. So you're going to make sure to check that out. And with that, we will see you guys in the next episode. Waterboys out.